Continuing from where we stopped in our previous video, I wanted to uh, tell you about some generalizations of the ideas that we have uh, seen in our previous video. So remember that uh, there we were talking about uh, determination of area of a region uh, which is given by, which is bounded above by the graph of this equation y equal to x square bounded below by x axis, bounded on the left by uh, by y axis and bounded on the right by uh, uh, the line x equal to 1. So in particular we were considering this function from 0, 1 to r. So now I want to stress that here it is not any more important that uh, this interval is 0, 1. So instead we could have worked with a perfectly arbitrary interval which is given by a, b. So then fx uh, that we had taken the function x square was an increasing function. Now I want to uh, emphasize that the method that we have discussed goes verbatim uh, in the case for any uh, monotonic increasing function on a closed interval. So uh, for the purpose of this lecture let us say that uh, it goes through uh, exactly in the similar way for a monotonically increasing continuous function. Indeed you will uh, you will see that uh, we can we can we can we can give a bound uh, for the region that we are considering uh, so we can give a lower bound ln and we can give an upper bound un and the area of r is squeezed between ln and un for all n and what is un? So to construct un I have divided this interval x equal to I, I, I mean I have divided the interval ab into n equal parts. I have constructed my network of bigger rectangles. I have constructed my network of smaller rectangles and the area of the network of bigger rectangles for uh, that particular n is called un the area of the smaller rectangular uh, network uh, for that particular n is defined to be ln so as i have just said that ar is still bounded between ln and un so all we need to show is that ln and un converges to the same function so but then uh, I will construct the difference. I will consider the difference of un and ln and again you can see that uh, this uh, area of the extra region which uh, which add up to uh, the quantity un minus ln perfectly fits well inside a part of the of the bigger rectangle. What does that give us? that gives us that the uh, the quantity un minus ln is exactly the area of this part of the bigger rectangle and can we compute the area of this big part of the rectangle indeed we can so first see that the the base of the rectangle has length b minus a divided by n whereas the height of the rectangle we have to do some work so here the first part the topmost point is given by b comma fb so the length of this big line is given by fb whereas i have to also consider uh, the the coordinate of this point that i have just highlighted here and how do we do that so we draw this uh, line parallel to x axis and see that here where we started our journey with uh, so if i remove all these lines so you can see that you can see that here uh, what we have is the point a comma a f a and you can see that this line intersects this line x equal to b at the point b comma a f a and consequently the coordinate of this point is b comma a f a and what does that give me is that the height of the rectangle is nothing but f b minus a f a. So what is then un minus ln? Again, this is the area of this rectangle. So what is the area of this rectangle? It is the uh, length of the base, which is b minus a by n times height of the rectangle, f b minus a f a. Now, uh, a monotonically increasing function on a closed and bounded interval is always going to be bounded. So in fact, for all x, 
we will have that this is less bigger than or equal to fa and less than or equal to fp and and of course uh, uh, so this things fa fp b and a these things are all constants and what varies with n is this quantity 1 by n and you can see that as n tends to infinity this quantity this expression goes to 0 so what we have shown is that ln and un has the same limit as n tends to infinity consequently ar is given by the common limit of un and ln so ar is equal to limit n tending to infinity un so we have generalized our uh, previous idea significantly to the case of monotonic uh, continuous monotonic increasing function uh, so next we are saying we want to tell you that uh, the same idea can be generalized to the case of continuous functions if uh, from a b to r so for this what we first do is that we divide the interval a b into n equal parts so here will be the sub intervals so n sub intervals of equal length for the ease of the notation i denote them by i1 i2 in so for constructing the network of bigger rectangles what i do is that i take the uh, i take the jth sub interval for each j and and construct a rectangle whose height is as follows so this is maximum of fx where x varies in the interval ij so uh, uh, so this maximum note that always exists because of our extreme value property of continuous functions on a closed and bounded interval uh, also uh, to construct the smaller rectangles to construct the smaller rectangles what we do we take the we we take uh, the on the base uh, ij we draw a rectangle with height minimum of fx as x varies in the interval ij so here is a pictorial representation so suppose that this is our interval sub interval ij uh, which is given by uh, the points a plus j minus 1 b minus a by n and a plus j, j times b minus a divided by n you can see that this is exactly uh, what we are looking at so this is going to be a plus uh, j times b minus a by n so this is not correct yeah so so now uh, this is not very important either what is important is uh, how this is uh, applied actually so this is the so suppose that this is the uh, portion of the graph in this region and i have taken the smallest uh, point on the graph or the lowest point on the graph to construct the rectangle white rectangle and we have taken the highest point on the graph to construct our green rectangle so so in principle what we are interested in we are interested in this area of this yellow region which i have bounded above by the area of this green region mm -hmm. and we have bounded uh, the bounded by area of this yellow region by the area of this white region i hope uh, what i have said makes sense and we can uh, we will see uh, of course uh, that the same idea can work and we will uh, we will have the fact that the area of r will again be bounded above by ln and bounded below by bounded above by un and bounded below by ln and these two things converge to the same things and consequently we will get our area so having done with the continuous functions we can we can do we can apply the same method to what is known as piecewise continuous functions so there are finitely many points of discontinuity so suppose that this is our interval x equal to uh, uh, interval uh, a b and suppose uh, that there are finitely many points where this function is discontinuous and of course uh, this function has to be bounded so piecewise continuous uh, bounded functions if the function is not bounded then we cannot do much but then once we have this situation bounded functions then we can uh, we can divide the interval into the sub intervals where the functions are continuous and once we have done that in each of the smaller sub intervals we know how to compute the area by using the method that we have described in our previous point
so now uh, now we have a more important point so here to uh, here wherever it made sense we have used uh, ar uh, uh, we have used for uh, ar the formula of limit n tending to infinity uh, un and as mentioned above uh, what we have done we have taken the maxima uh, which uh, which occurs in the interval ij so namely uh, so for describing ar we have used limit n tending to infinity 1 by n which is the length of each sub interval that we have taken uh, summation j equal to 1 to n f of big mj and where, what is uh, f of big mj f of big mj is the maximum value of fx as x varies inside uh, the interval ij the uh, jh sub interval and also this was remember our limit and tending to infinity ln so which was uh, which was constructed using uh, the smallest value of the function in the interval now the question arises what if we choose we chose a random point in the interval uh, in the interval and uh, and constructed the sum and we asked what is this limit so what is this limit as n tending n tends to infinity where does it go so a priori it is not very clear but because we have done lot this much of hard work we can now easily uh, easily uh, compute this limit so something very nice happens so we see that for all j for all values of j we have f of small mj is less than or equal to f of cj and this is less than or equal to f of p k j so what i do i multiply uh, so i multiply uh, this by 1 by n this is a positive quantity and i take sum right sum j equal to 1 to n you can see that the that the inequality uh, still holds after even after taking the sum and dividing by n and what uh, does this, th that give us if this and this converge to the same thing that is uh, we are in the situation uh, that we like uh, what we have seen before then this sum this sum and limit uh, intending to infinity of this sum will also go to the same thing so so in the cases where we could compute the area this limit is given by ar and consequently ar is equal to uh, uh, the limit of this sum so in principle what we have shown is that uh, is that wherever we can compute ar by by uh, using the method of exhaustion uh, whatever i have told you in the span of this two videos we do not really need to uh, find the local maximum but find the maxima of the function if uh, in the jth interval nor do we need to find the minima of the function in the jth interval instead we could choose uh, a random point on each of the interval and we could take limit so that will give us the area of the region finally we would like to say that whenever we can compute the area of such a region which is bounded above by a function y equal to fx or the curve graph of the equation y equal to fx then uh, uh, then we wanted to define area of r as integral from a to b fx dx so as i have mentioned wherever it makes sense but now the question arises is integration all about computing area the answer clearly is no and we will see uh, we will develop the theory of integration uh, without using differential the notion of differential calculus in the span of our next couple of lecture videos for the time